Today, I'm going to show you a trick on how you can make continuous bias tape at home. We'll go through what bias tape is, the tools that you'll need, the steps on how to cut it at home and reduce waste, and also how to sew it onto your projects. Bias tape are strips of fabric that are cut on the bias which means that they're cut diagonal to the grain. And that usually means that they're a little bit more flexible and stretchy. And the purpose is to hide raw edges. So this is a project that I did a couple years ago and I actually have bias tape on the edges of the collar. And there's a video of me making this vest on my channel if you wanna check that out. For this vest, I did a double fold bias tape. There's a double fold and a single fold. This is what a single fold would look like. So there's two folds, one on the bottom, one on the top. Whereas if you fold it one more time, so now there's three folds, this is a double fold. And I would say this is probably more common on most projects. You can actually go to a fabric store and buy bias tape in a roll, but a lot of people make them at home because then you can match the color to the fabric that you're working with, which a lot of the times if you go to the shop, they only have a black, white, beige, and a few select colors. But if you make it at home off the fabric that you buy, then you'll definitely, definitely be able to match your project. Another project that I use bias tape on a lot are Sunu bags, which I have a tutorial on that. If you want to learn how to make those and use bias tape, then you should check that out as well. The tools and supplies to make your own bias tape, you're going to want the fabric. You're going to need chalk or some kind of marking tool to draw on the fabric and then the ruler that goes along with it so you can get the right size. You're going to need scissors. If you have rotary cutters, you can use those too. They'll give you a sharper cut, but they're not necessary. And for me, whenever I pull out the rotary cutters, I always grab my metal ruler. You're definitely gonna need an iron. Now, I just use a normal household iron. I don't have like a specific sewing iron. I haven't been convinced otherwise, like this one's held up for me for so long, but let me know in the comment section if you think I should switch to a proper sewing iron. And then the bias tool makers. This is a five piece set, probably about 10 bucks on Amazon. So I'll have a link in the description below if you wanna buy this. The benefits of getting a set like this is that it actually creates a fold for you. So it cuts down your time and it's also a consistent fold throughout. So it's a lot more precise. When you're creating bias tape, if you have a specific project in mind, you can actually use this formula to get the exact length that you need. What you wanna do is get your desired length times the width of your bias tape, which if it's a double fold, it's gonna be four times the final desired width. If it's a single fold, it's gonna be double the desired width. That's the amount of square units you'll need for this fabric and then divide that by the square root of that number to get your final dimensions for the square that we're gonna be cutting. So now let's get into the steps, the tutorial on how to make continuous bias tape at home. So now I'm gonna teach y'all how to cut the fabric. You're gonna start off with your fabric. I'm using this poly cotton twill. It's in this green smoke color. Flatten out the fabric so that you get a nice clean cut and you're gonna to wanna to measure out your square based on the formula that I mentioned before. If you're working with fabric that still has a salvage edge on it, cut that out before you measure and cut out your actual square. Grab your fabric ruler and chalk and mark it up, then cut it out. Step number two, join the triangles. So you're gonna take your square and have it face up or have the right side on the top. And you're gonna cut a line from the top right corner to the bottom left corner. Then take your scissors or your rotary cutters and cut along that line. Once you do that, bring the bottom edge up to the top edge and then sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Just to double check, it should be right sides on the inside and then wrong sides on the outside and then grab your clips or your pins, whatever your game is. Hold the edges in place so you get a nice clean stitch. Pull out that sewing machine. I'm gonna do the tension at four and the stitch length at two and a half. It's a poly cotton 12 midweight fabric. I think four and 2.5 are like the average you're usually in. So I'm gonna keep that the same. And friendly reminder, do a reverse stitch at the beginning and the end. Thank you. Now that you've stitched that quarter inch seam allowance, trim that down to about an eighth of an inch. The reason we do a quarter inch and then trim down to an eighth of an inch is because if we tried to sew at an eighth of an inch from the start, it doesn't give the machine much fabric like the feed dogs or the presser foot to hold onto, meaning the fabric is kind of unstable and it would lead to inconsistent stitching. So start at a quarter inch, cut it down to an eighth, and then use an iron to press it open. 
This will leave you with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, which will help reduce a lot of the bulk underneath the bias tape. Now it's time for step three to draw the strips. So with the wrong side on top, meaning you probably have to flip it over, you wanna mark the lines with the desired width. So grab your fabric ruler and chalk and get started. Make sure you're drawing these lines parallel to the longer side of the fabric. Mark the lines from the bottom all the way to the top. Sometimes you might have some fabric and it didn't cut to a perfect square. That's fine, just cut off the excess with your scissors. Now on to step four, creating the offset tube. This part's really important, so pay attention. You're gonna wanna flip it over and bring the short sides together, forming this tube. Once you see the lines match up perfectly, you're actually gonna offset it by one row. So pull either edge so that it just pulls it to the left or to the right. This is gonna give you that continuous cut. Once the lines are offset, bring the edges up kind of like a pinching motion and try to assume a quarter inch. This is gonna be the seam allowance. Use pins or clips to hold that together. And at the connecting seam is where the line should meet up. Throw it under your sewing machine after. Cut that seam allowance down to one eighth of an inch. And then don't forget to press out the seams. Now we're on to step five, cutting the spiral. It's pretty simple. You're gonna take the edge and cut all the way around and it should be one continuous strip. Now on to step six, we're gonna press it into the double fold bias tape. This is a fun part where we get to pull out the tool. I definitely enjoy this, it's kind of satisfying. There's five different sizes for the bias tape tool. I'm gonna use the 18 millimeter one. This will give me a final double fold of three eighths of an inch. One end of the tape should be cut on an angle, but if it's not, you can cut it yourself. This just makes it a lot easier to feed through the bias tape tool. Make sure, make sure when you're loading the bias tape through the feed that the right side is on the bottom. So when I flip it over to iron it, that the right side is on top. Once you've fed it through, you're just gonna pull the tool slowly with one hand while you iron with the other hand. And just do this all throughout the whole tape. Careful when you're coming close to the seams. It does get a little bit thicker, so just watch out for that when you're ironing. Once you're done ironing through the whole tape, this is single folded bias tape. So if this is what you wanted, you could stop here. But if you wanted that double folded bias tape, like you're trying to make a vest like mine or a Suna bag, then you're gonna have to fold it one more time to give you that double fold bias tape. So that's how you cut and make bias tape. And now I'm gonna show you how to sew bias tape. So once you've created your bias tape, you're actually gonna open it up and put the right side on the bottom. That means the wrong side's facing upwards. You're gonna take your project, for me it's this bag, and I'm gonna line up the edge of the bias tape with the edge of the project. So the right side of the bias tape is actually next to the wrong side of the project. The raw edges on the side will match up, and you're gonna stitch at 3 8 of an inch. But before you sew down, you're actually gonna start three inches below the start of the tape. Kind of weird, weird flex, I know but this is gonna help us get that clean finish where we're gonna tie the ends together so that it looks seamless. Trust the process. Now I know you're not forgetting to do that reverse stitch at the beginning, right? Just like I know you're not gonna forget to subscribe to my channel, please. Once you go all the way around, you're gonna come close to the starting of your tape. Stop stitching when you're about three or four inches from the beginning stitch. Close the stitch and take it out of the machine. You're gonna lay the project flat and you're gonna wanna join the ends in the middle. Pin or clip the pieces together. Sometimes I fold it on top of each other and then use chalk to mark where that intersection is. Once you have that marked, sew it together, trim it down to an eighth of an inch, press it open, and then we're gonna finish sewing this hidden stitch. Once we're done that, flip the project inside out so now right sides are on the outside and then pull down the double fold so that it's covering the raw edge. This is where I usually match up the edge of that fold to the stitch that we just did. And then I switch out my regular standard presser foot for the zipper foot because this is how I get a really, really close stitch. A helpful tip, be careful not to pull too hard at the tape because this will cause puckering once it's stitched. The goal is to have the tape lie flat and as straight as possible. And that's it, my friends. That's all you gotta do. This is how you properly sew bias tape onto your projects. I did mine onto this Suno bag. 
which I have a tutorial for, as well as other DIYs on my channel. If you check that out, subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.